So guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see behind, um, we're now in official spring in Canada, but we've had a massive dump of snow the other day. It's about 15 to 18 centimetres. Starting to melt away now, which is quite nice. And hopefully that's the last of the, the white stuff um, for this spring. Um, and it's been a few weeks since I last went down and visited the Cooper's Hawks. I thought I'd go down and see how they're getting on. Um, I've been since been back to the UK and I haven't been to this site for at least three weeks so I thought I'd give it a go and uh, see what they're up to today and see what else is around as well maybe head along the river and see if those kingfishers are out and about but uh, it's a beautiful day to get back out looks like it's again going to be a cracking day here in uh, the outskirts of Toronto um, and hopefully we'll get some luck hopefully the birds will be busy actively um, hunting as well as probably safeguarding territory um, so yeah, get in there, get set up as before really and just sit back and enjoy the day and see what, uh, what it brings really. But uh, yeah, I've got quite a bit of kit with me today, got two big, big lenses with me, two bodies, um, just don't do some trekking around as well and uh, yeah, see how it goes. guys I've just got here and uh, there's a uh, white-tailed deer right in front of me. God I never thought I'd expect to see them just right in here but uh, yeah it's having a little look at me at the minute. Uh, it's just casing me out I think. Oh there's actually two. Wow. Gosh. Well they get set up. I'm trying to get set up here guys with these, without flushing these deer. Um, I think there might be three. They're probably about, I don't know, a good 50 feet away, I guess. Um, certainly not bothered about me. Beautiful to see them though, quite happy. Seeing humans is not a massive threat here is, is such a breath of fresh air, but I don't like to have that familiar relationship with with bird species if I can help it and mammal species because I like to have that separation, that distance. Um, when it gets too close, they're quite tame. It just kind of ruins the experience for me. Hence why I don't do um, a lot of baited stuff and a, a lot of like um, falconry centers and places like that because it just doesn't really interest me. I, I like to be out in the wilds so and when these deer are quite habituated here, you know, it kind of takes the edge off a little bit. Me stalking out on Exmoor, taking hours and hours to get to deer, um, you know, a lot of time and effort, field craft, and in here I just stumble across these deer and they just stay in there cracking on feeding. So yeah, a lot, a lot of squirrel activity as well around. So um, anyway, gonna get the, uh, the prime lens mounted on and hopefully we'll be able to get some few images of these deer. So guys, it appears we've got two that I can see at the moment and they're not that far away um, and they aren't bothered about me at all, but I'm still mindful, I don't want to push my luck. If I were to then walk towards them now, they would bolt and run off. Um, most people will probably see them, casually watch them and then just move off. So the last thing I want to do is move in on them. 
This would never happen at home, um, but obviously here with a busy place around them, the, the deer aren't actually that bothered. Um, as I said, as long as you're mindful of not pushing your luck and going in on the deer themselves. Um, they're happily feeding there, not bothered about me at all. I'm probably at the moment, I reckon I've just shoved a forward a little bit more and they're moving down now, So, but they're really heavily obscured at the moment by loads of um, twigs and branches on the ground. And they're eating some very, very fine green um, shoots that have come out on what it looks like some sort of creeping tree or branch. Um, so they're just feeding on what they can. Um, but hopefully they'll come out in the open, we'll get a good view of them. So good bit of news, just had the, uh, the Cooper's Hawk fly right through and uh, right up to the nest and it started titivating the nest and um, played around for a little bit and then it just moved off. Um, I think it was the male, not sure. Um, but uh, I'm just recording some video, I'm hoping it's going to come back. It, it went off into the forest. Um, I can see it further down on a post down there. Um, and as I said, I'm, I certainly wouldn't go after um, and go crashing through the undergrowth. I'm just going to sit here, wait, chill, and hopefully those birds will just relax as they did before when I was here on my last visit. And uh, yeah, they'll just get used to me, go about their daily business, and hopefully we'll get some um, great shots of birds. And just and really, it's all about learning their behavior too. Um, it's a new species, I've just bought a great book on them, so I'm going to read up on those. And that's one good thing I love doing as well, is, is looking, at, looking at new species, studying the new species, and the fact the deer are just coming towards me now. I'm just recording on the nest at the moment, looking straight at me, so I'm going to get back to it. So guys, the white-tailed deer, and it ended up being two. There was a female, a doe, and a youngster there as well. Um, and they just literally moved off, probably about, I don't know, maybe 40, 50 foot from me. Just mooched down the hill, down into the valley there, gone. Um, not bothered about me whatsoever, just feeding. I didn't really get any decent shots there. They were quite masked by the forest, um, but they were happy. I was happy just to see them doing their thing. Um, obviously gone um, out the way now to hide away for the rest of the day. Um, and the Cooper's Hawk's been in and out. So it's been the female I've seen, not the male. She's coming up to the nest. She's doing a bit of titivation in the nest, sorting it out. And then she's sort of doing a little bit of um, fluffing down on the nest a bit. I don't think she's got anything in there as yet, not with the recent weather. Um, and then she's flying off into a woodland at the end there. She seems to be just holding up down there constantly. Um, but uh, I've got the best view I can in on the nest site here and I'm hoping she's going to come back in and we'll get a bit of slow-mo stuff as she's getting into that nest. But uh, yeah, the light's terrible out to the right here. It's casting a heavy contrast and, and silhouette to the images and obviously to the video as well. So, but you've got to work with what you've got. I can't access it to the other side because it's on a lower slope. And if I go further around, I'm going to be shooting straight into the sun. So it's the best of, um, best of a interesting situation but it's just great to see the birds here doing their thing and she's been really really vocal making some really interesting noises um, almost like chicken like at times um, quite bizarre but um, yeah she's such a flyer coming right through the woodland it'd be lovely to film uh, a Cooper's Hawk coming low through the forest but there's just far too much clutter nigh on impossible really um, but I'll certainly give it a go if I can but yeah fantastic so far so we've had the white-tailed deer we've had lots of woodpeckers as well and the nuthatches around in dead trees behind me here um, it's been fantastic got a brew on a nice day happy days um, yeah really really nice but uh, gonna chill out for a bit and uh, hopefully she'll come back So guys, setting wise at the moment, I'm shooting at um, ultra slow motion at um, full HD. So that's 240. Um, and what I've done, I've, I've, I've actually put the focus point furthest to the right onto the nest, checked through the uh, zoom button, make sure it's sharp focus. And then I've paused the video so it's not gonna hunt focus. Um, I'm at F8 as well, so I've got a great depth of field. And I'm just letting the video run as space to the left as a bird comes in. I've been watching her as she comes in. She comes in the same sort of flight path, flies from one end, certainly comes in at one side every time, the left hand side. And then she comes right up to the nest from there. And hopefully as she's flying in, she's quite in line with the nest. So hopefully as she comes up, 
she'll be in sharp focus all the way in and with that good depth of field as well at f8 should be able to get a pretty good focus on it and the nest as i say is sharp as a button so that's kind of what i'm doing there um i've custom functioned my camera to allow me to pause video because the worst thing is sometimes when you're doing video is that you're say videoing a bird on a post static um, as soon as that bird moves puts its head down it starts hunting for focus um, and then you go as all blur and then you lose it so the best thing there is is pause focus if you've got a good depth of field anyway like f8 or something then when the bird dips its head and puts its head back up it's likely to be still in focus and the video then it's not going to hunt so i do the furthest right hand button um, on the top there and i just customize that to make sure that i can pause video it's a really really good function to have and it really does stop you getting that um, hunt focus as soon as the bird moves maybe left to right or if it's eating something and it puts its head up and down sometimes when it does that obviously then you lose it and it goes all blurry and then you spoil your video so just one of those things to know if you're doing any video guys it's a really handy thing to customize your camera if you're able to do so got a lovely um northern cardinal there Lovely sound it makes. So it's all gone a little quiet at the moment, guys. It's, um, she's been in, I think, three times now. And uh, it's been probably about an hour. You know, everything's gone pretty quiet. I'm hearing loads of bird species around. White-breasted and red-breasted natatches, uh, chickadees, woodpeckers. I heard the kingfisher down in the valley there along the river. Um, since red-tailed hawks go over top as well, which has been nice. But to all quiet on the uh, Cooper's Hawk front at the moment. I've got the camera still trained on the nest going to just want to get a nice shot of her coming in really to land and I think I'm going to move location going to head down further into the forest a lot of fallen dead stuff down there I think that's possibly where um, the male comes in with a kill for the female she's staying very close to the uh, to the nest uh, and not deviating too far and imagine he's off hunting um, fattening himself up uh, for his busy time ahead and also obviously finding food for her then bringing it back so it'd be nice to witness a bit of that behavior so I'm going to hang on here for another hour or so I think until she comes in hopefully a few things will come my way um, and as I said as I was coming into the woodland um, I've not been here for about three weeks and it's really important even though these birds are quite habituated I think really to, to the comings and goings of humans you know it's so tempting that I'll come here every day but you really don't want to upset the balance there um, and let them get on with what they need to get on with, especially when they're laying eggs. She's not obviously on eggs at the moment. Um, she will be at some point soon, and then we just want to leave them get on. Once they've got eggs, they'll be, she'll be sitting and there won't be an awful lot going on. So, um, and leave them be really. Um, and hopefully the male will be actively coming in with some food. But uh, yeah, it's just being mindful really of the birds. You know, They probably wouldn't be bothered with me at all if I came here every day. But it sit, doesn't sit well with me to bother the birds too much, you know, and preying in on their world, really. You know, it's, uh, it's all right now and then just to come and have a look, spend a day with them and then leave them be for a period of weeks and then come back. You know, um, it's basically you don't want to kick the arse out of it too much. And, and, and there's a chance, probably no chance I'm going to upset them. But, you know, back home, if you were to do that, yeah you really would upset the birds they would not like it whatsoever unless they obviously knew you weren't there but let's face it the birds are always one step ahead and uh birds of prey especially with that acute sense of eyesight are going to pick you out um and they're going to know you're there and i think that sits doesn't sit well with me um personally and ethically so uh yeah all right spend a bit of time with them but uh, it's always good to give them a bit of um you know a bit of distance as well and leave them be and get on with what they need to get on with so the Cooper's Hawks at the moment, I've got the female to my right, um, high up in a tree, just waiting, the male went round to the circuit and he bombed off and he's just come back and he's just gone up in front of me here about sort of that direction and uh, he's just gone down on some prey and I'm hoping maybe if he's caught something he'll take it back over to her on a perch and go from there but uh, Again, they're just doing their thing and not bothered about me. I'm really still not being loud, no erratic movements, just taking it nice and easy. And uh, 
yeah, let's hope he's plucking away and uh, I've got something for her um, and maybe take it to her. That would be fantastic, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. slightly higher now guys so I can get in a bit more of a better view of the bird um, I'm shooting kind of <clears throat> heavily silhouetted at the moment so I'm losing a lot of the detail but I've managed to get pretty much eye level with the female Cooper's hawk that's just sitting in the tree it's been there for about half an hour or so I suppose it's bloody freezing <laughs> um, but it's lovely it's birds all around and it just doesn't know where to look um, I don't think it's actively hunting like that. I think it's just waiting to be fed by the male, but I'm hoping he's going to come back in soon. But she seems very, very tolerant of me, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, finally get a bit of action here, a bit of flight shots, but um, she's sitting still, she's sitting pretty, but uh, yeah, back to her. Absolutely incredible, beautiful front, lovely gunmetal black back on it. Oh, it's just tremendous. Absolutely lovely. Got a little gap right through, nigh on eye level. Fantastic. Lovely to capture the bird in the environment a bit more, not just up close, but yeah, oh, it's a gorgeous bird. So guys, I had a little bit of a recce along, just along the path there really, not trying to go into the wood um, too deep. Um, they don't really want to flush. The female Coopers who's in there somewhere heard her calling, but it's really hard to see in there. Cracking sticks and going through isn't really the done thing, but she's in there somewhere and they're really tolerant of me, which is fantastic, you know, just get to observe them from a distance. But uh, it is really nice just to see them both really actively here. 
and that sun is coming out now. It's absolutely glorious, it is. Um, yeah, really, really nice, but it's getting to that sort of height of the day with the sun, so it's really bright. Um, but it's very soon, it's just, this whole forest will be completely covered in greenery and it'll be dark in here and I won't get the view of the birds so easily either. So it's nice to see them when the trees are bare like this and certainly get to know what they're up to. Um, she's definitely in this back bit here. I think there's like a killing area there where he brings food in for her. I don't really want to push it and go in there really. If I can find out where it is, I could stake it out and then maybe wait there another day. But at the moment, in fact, I think I can see her actually. Yes, I can. <laughs> Just stumbled across her just here. Looking, there she is, looking resplendent up there. Absolutely lovely. Just saw the shape of her and she's just chilling out in the tree up there. Absolutely lovely. Well, I'm gonna leave her be anyway. So while I'm waiting here for the, the coopers to, to come back, hopefully, and the male's gone out to hunt and the female's just chilling, um, I can hear the belted kingfishers constantly down there in the, in the river, um, <clears throat> right at the spot that I've been trying time and time again. So I do need to get back down there again um, and get those kingfishers because, I mean, I'm still lucked out on them so far. Uh, I've had a few distant shots, a bit of video, but nothing close. Um, they are one difficult bird to get close to. Um, they recognise hides, features, There's something new on the riverbank and they've got this massive hide there. They're just all over it. Um, so I have to come up with some new tactics. I think probably some sort of lying down bag hide, I think, on along the riverbank might just confuse them a little bit more, get nice and low level, hopefully. But then it's very tricky then to do video as well for that when you're lying down and you're not really on a tripod unless I use um, uh, one of those um, ground pods, which are really, really good. Um, might be able to get down low enough for a bit of video, but uh, definitely on the list, guys. But I can't get enough of these Cooper's hawks at the moment. Um, they're just fantastic. I'm learning so much about them. Um, just about their behaviour, times of day when they're active. Um, yeah, fantastic, really. You know, I've wanted to spend time with sparrowhawks at home in the UK, but they're very skittish and you very rarely get close to those guys. So, um, yeah, it's a pleasure being with these. And, uh, yeah, so another Cooper's hawk uh, video, I know. But... Um, magnificent birds absolutely magnificent they really are um, so well worth investing the time again and again with these birds um, and on such a beautiful day as well so i've been distracted by like what looks like some sort of shrike or flycatcher now it's a great little bird it's really really small it's flitting around quite low on the ground i think it's obviously a migrant new arrival so interesting looks very flycatcherish um but I've yet to do a spring here in Canada, so there's lots of bird species that are arriving that I wouldn't have a clue what they are. I'm hoping it's gonna come a little bit closer. Um, it's just sitting still at the minute. Let's see if I can get a better angle to get a better shot. Well, I just tried to get some pictures of it and uh, it's pretty skittish. <laughs> but uh, I think I've got a couple there. I'm going to get back, have a look in the books and see if we can ID that one. As I said, I think it's a flycatcher. Um, it's so nice to see that these bird species are arriving now because, you know, as I said, I've not experienced the spring here and some of the species when I got here end of July had already gone. And apparently there's some absolutely crackers so uh yeah can't wait it's gonna be a massive learning curve for me though for especially small birds warbler flycatcher types um obviously i can see sort of what maybe family they're from but hard to id the exact species um but that's what half the fun of it is really you know being here now in increasing my my knowledge of of birds here in north america um so yeah really looking forward to that and it's nice just to have a little break away from the coopers for a minute have a little look at those smaller bird species um, yeah, take it all in, but uh, it's feeling really warm now. Snow is really starting to melt, but it's, my Christ, is it slippery. Um, it's like an ice skating ring. But uh, anyway, back to, uh, back to the main camera and uh, back to the Cooper Talks. Oh man, just at the end there, just as I was going back along the path, my God, a huge bird of prey went over the top 
and uh, yeah, it was a vulture. So the vultures are back. Um, massive, massive bird. So, so nice to see those turkey vultures back um, with the black underneath and the white banding as well. Oh, absolutely huge birds. I'm surprised the Cooper's hawk didn't, um, didn't uh, go up then because it went right over the nest. But uh, yeah, fantastic to see it. Absolutely awesome. Well guys, it's been a cracking morning sesh. Been here for probably about four hours today. It's been really, really good. Really enjoyed it. Seen the, uh, the jays, heard the kingfishers, loads of woodpeckers about, nuthatches. Cooper's hawks have been quite active, but they've gone real quiet now. So I think I'm just going to leave them be, head home, and I'll come back and revisit this place in a few weeks time. Um, but I think I will be back along the river, maybe in a week or so to do the kingfishers. But uh, yeah, it's been fantastic. Just at the end there with that new migrant arrival, um, flycatchery type species. Lovely to see that. Just gives you a taste of stuff to come here in Canada. But uh, yeah, been fantastic guys. I hope I got some great shots there. If not, I've had a fantastic day and that's what all matters really. Um, I would say if those that want to subscribe to the channel, subscribe. But if you want to subscribe, you'll subscribe. If you don't, you don't. So I'll just leave that one up to you guys. But uh, thanks very much indeed for watching. As always, for me regulars, uh, a like and a comment is always massively appreciated. Um, thanks again, guys, really, for all the support here whilst I'm in Canada. And I hope you enjoyed my um, video back in the UK on the woodland, which was uh, fantastic to be back amongst um, my little woodland at home. It was, uh, it was awesome, but uh, lots more to come from me and uh, looking forward to the spring. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you next time. <laughs>